Bearcat Blitz firing up another episode right here on the Believe Network. Russ Heltman, your all Bearcats reporter, here joined by UC wide receiver Dominic Goodman. We are in the back half of Iowa State Week, the bye week behind us, and the home stretch, the back half of the Bearcats 2023 season ahead as UC tries to get to 500, stay, get above 500, and stay above 500 for the rest of the season. Thank you all for checking us out on whatever podcast feed you're finding us, Apple, Spotify, Google, all that good stuff. Subscribe, rate, and review there. Check us out on YouTube, Talking Catch with Russ Heltman. Thank you for popping on the video feed. And another way to get us on video is by watching Valley Sports Ohio. We are on the schedule each and every weekend. Dom, how you doing, my man? We got a big show today. Welcoming on UC wide receiver, former quarterback, turned wide receiver Evan Prater. He's had a nice impact in the first year he's playing the position for UC, and we're going to dive into the Iowa State preview after that. Yeah, I'm excited. You know, I was in that situation myself, but I, I made the switch a little a little early my freshman year. But, uh, I mean, I'm excited. He's a hometown guy, did, did some great things for Wyoming. Uh, I'm excited to get a chance to uh, talk to him. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll get to Evan after this message from Bet Online. Football is back, and Bet Online is your number one information source for all your sports wagering info with all the up to minute stats, news, scores, and matchup breakdowns. Get the latest game odds, spreads, and totals from the NFL and college football at your fingertips with Bet Online's real time updates on statistics, news, and odds. From week one all the way to the college football playoff and Super Bowl, Bet Online gives you access to the best football promotions and contests available anywhere online. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. B L E A V to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. And now we start off our interview with UC wide receiver Evan Prater. Evan, thank you so much for joining the program and uh, giving us some time this week. I know it's very busy with the Iowa State preparation. Let's start with the transition in your new role. You're, you're making an impact already. Eight catches on the year, 71 yards, a nice. 8.9 9 yards per catch. You're getting down the field and making plays already as a wide receiver after transitioning from the quarterback spot last year. How do you feel comfort-wise in this new role five games in? I feel really comfortable. I think uh, it was kind of a natural transition in some ways, but at the same time, I feel like just getting a feel for the game itself, how DBs want to play, what their thought process is, uh, that was kind of like a big change for me because – that was one thing I never really thought about, the technique stuff that goes into uh, the wide receiver and how DBs want to play certain guys. So uh, kind of after these five games, I feel like I've gotten a better feel for it, and I feel like it'll just grow moving forward. All right. So I'll do the same. I kind of was a similar thing. Started as a as a quarterback coming in and switched to the receiver role when I was there. Um, I know – does, do you find it a lot easier for us, like, when you're running your routes, this guy, like, figuring out the holes and the zone coverage and stuff like that? Oh, for sure. When I was talking to the coaches when we were first talking about making the transition, they said that was one of those big things because I feel like I have a great understanding of what kind of Emory's thinking and where they want to pick apart these defenses. So finding those open zones was kind of natural for me, having that kind of QB mind in the back of my head. So it's made it a lot easier. Did you think at all about – because I, I know a lot of the transitions for quarterbacks, it's either it's almost oftentimes if it's defensive, they go to linebacker, or if they stay on offense, they go to tight end. Did you feel like you had enough speed to be able to use your length on the outside more so than trying to bulk up in the limited time frame you had between spring ball and fall camp to try to be a tight end? Is that kind of is that kind of why you lean towards wide receiver? Yeah, it was just uh, I'm a lengthy guy, athletic guy, and I feel like that was kind of the best position for me at the time. We didn't really have much time for me to put on those 25, 30 extra pounds. And right. I don't know if we could have done that in the right way if we wanted to do it so fast. So I think wide receiver was just my best bet. Makes a lot of sense. Dom, all you. Uh, I know when I got moved to receiver, I, I know my first thing, my trouble with it was getting off the jam. What would you say was your toughest thing to learn as a receiver? Uh, the first thing – I. I think the ball skills were natural. And then I would just say, like, trying to drop your hips coming in and out of cuts and then definitely the release work. I mean, the first couple of times we did release work with the DBs, I'm not going to lie, they got me a couple of times. And after that, I kind of just started uh, putting the pieces together like, okay, 
uh, getting my feet right, kind of seeing what they're trying to do and then working off them. So at first I was kind of just trying to do my own thing and they kind of took me to the sideline a couple of times. But after after those few times, I've, I've definitely got it figured out now. What was the easiest thing for you to pick up in this whole transition? I would just say the ball skills. I feel like that's okay. one of those things that I've always been good with, being able to track a ball and the hands were always natural. I mean, my dad and my brother, uh, my dad played tight end, my brother played receiver. So it's one of those things where kind of from a young age, he taught me how to catch a football and the proper way to catch a football. So the ball skills were probably the most natural thing for me. Okay. So how's it been for you being able to play and playing for your hometown, home city? Um, just basically, you've been here for a while. How's that journey been going for you? Uh, it's been a very special journey. I mean, growing up in Cincinnati, I'm coming to games as a young kid when they had the big blow up Bearcat. I'm running out underneath it. I'm in my youth football jersey watching you guys play. So seeing the moments like that when I was young and then kind of having that dream as a young kid that I want to be here one day and then finally getting into high school and uh, being given that opportunity was something I couldn't pass up. And I feel like it's been such a special journey so far. And I mean, there's been a lot of ups and downs, as we've seen, a lot of highs, a lot of lows, but um, it's one of those things that I'm in my hometown. It's something special. Nippert's a great atmosphere, week in and week out, and kind of just wearing that Cincinnati on my chest, it means a lot to me. Yeah, speaking of those ball skills, I, I just checked right now. You don't have any any drops this season, so you've done a good job bringing, reeling in those passes. And one of the more – like it's it's been impressive, Evan, that uh, when I look at PFF right now, you're, you're covering over a 70 70- – receiving grade in the past game. I mean, to do that in your first five games, what do you attribute that to? Is it just a natural kind of feel? Is it just those natural ball skills allowing you to kind of seamlessly transition here? And I mean, it, it, I'm sure you kind of expected to get on the field early in this, in this spot, but you're, you're playing over some other guys that have been playing wide receiver for years and years now. I feel like it was a lot of the natural stuff that came to me, but then also just having a lot of guys that have a lot of experience at the uh, position in our receiver room. Like we got guys like Xavier Henderson, D Wiggins, Braden Smith, Chris Scott, Aaron Turner. I mean, we got guys that have been doing this their whole life. So kind of just at first I was really just bouncing ideas off them and seeing what I could do better. And they've, they've helped me tremendously ever (laughs) since we started. I mean, it's a great group of guys and everybody wants to see each other win. So Having guys like that, it makes it a lot easier for me. Yeah, it's a tight knit team. I've definitely felt that in my coverage of this crew with uh, a, t- a tight knit team of, after a, a big stretch of transition yeah. in terms of roster movement, coach movement. So that's a cool thing to see that this staff and this entire roster has kind of come together so fast despite all that. Speaking of coming together, how did the bye week change for you individually? And then just your overall feel about how the team is come off of the bye week, approach the bye week, and this mindset heading into Iowa State? I think we had some of our best practices over this bye week. And coming back this week, I mean, practice have been high energy. And, I mean, Coach Sada said it after practice. has been some of our best practices so far, kind of just fresh legs, fresh minds, knowing that we're going into the back half of this season. So I think everybody's kind of just coming together. We had a number of meetings over the – over the uh, bye week just to try to figure out what we need to do as players and coaches to kind of take this next step going into the back half of this season. So I think that the fresh bodies and the fresh minds and bouncing ideas off each other, I think that's something that's really helped us and it will help us going into the second half. Dom, you got anything else? Um, Well, what's, what's one thing I know from going from quarterback aspect, preparing for a game, and a receiver uh, mind saying, what's, what's your mindset? Is it a little different coming to a game or is this uh, game planning and thinking and just prepar- uh, going through preparation? Um, I feel like it's kind of the same for me because I'm so used to sitting in those quarterback meetings. So kind of I'm one of those guys that I might be the only dude in the receiver room that's filling out that notebook every week. I mean, pages on pages of notes. And it's kind of just like that quarterback mentality that I have sitting in that room kind of seeing the coverages and I'm even looking at the front sometimes think, and I'm thinking like, I don't even know what I'm doing. I don't need to know that anymore really. But uh, it's just kind of one of those things that that's that quarterback mindset is kind of just still stuck in the back of my head. So the preparation for me is really still the same. Evan Prater, 
wide receiver, former cornerback, and playing very well, very efficient so far in his status as a UC wide receiver. We'll see if uh keep leveling up the rest of the year. Evan, thank you so much for your time this week. Good luck against Iowa State. Good luck with the rest of the season as you keep hammering away at this new position. It's been uh, been cool to watch you transition. Thank you. I appreciate you guys for having me. Awesome stuff there from Evan Prater. I've been wanting to chat with Evan about all the, all the – it's just so cool, Dom, the, the different dynamics and, and the fact that you have that perspective as well of being able to go from a different position in, in high school to a new one in college. And then for Evan, obviously, tra- making that transition at the college level, it's it just shows you the – the amount of athleticism for some of these guys is is unbelievable. And the fact that he's performing at such a good level, snap to snap in terms of his technique, in terms of his routes, in terms of just everything he's doing so early on as a wide receiver, it's got to be encouraging for the staff to keep a leader like Evan Prater engaged in this team and also get production out of him all at the same time. It's cool stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's a great thing. It's just like you said, I went through the same transition. Um, just – Watching him play, just I see him getting better each week with route running and just knowing the coverage when to sit in the zone and all those things. And, and and I always say the best athletes are quarterbacks. So once you play quarterback, you can play any position out there. We're the most skillful players out there. But um, he's doing a great job. The transition been great for him. And, and I hope I just hope for the best for him for more, more in his career. No doubt. No doubt. We'll continue watching Evan Prater. As he progresses, as I mentioned, no drops this season in his first year playing wide receiver at the college level. Eight catches for 71 yards and uh, a long or a long of 14 there. So he's getting targeted down the field. He's getting targeted kind of in the mid- intermediate range and doing a good job with those targets. Speaking of targets, UC has some big ones that they're going to try to get the ball to in this upcoming game. Xavier Henderson, Braden Smith, a guy, Shimon Mater, who exploded onto the scene against BYU. He touched on a lot of that stuff last week. He's a guy that I'm looking to maybe open things up for this passing offense in the middle part of the field. Dom and I will dive into that, plus a full preview of Iowa State, the matchup. Bearcats favored once again this weekend. It's one of, I think, six of the final seven games they are favored in. Five of the final seven games they're for sure favored in, according to ESPN's Football Power Index. We'll dive into all that on the back half of Bearcat Blitz right here on the Believe Network. Bearcat Blitz rolling along here as we wrapped up a great conversation with Evan Prater, UC quarterback turned wide receiver and doing a great job with that transition. Solid, solid impact so far for a guy that's been only playing the position for a few months. Let's get into this preview, Dom. We don't have a ton of time and there's a lot of stuff that we could talk about with the Bearcats taking on the Iowa State Cyclones. Looking at the matchup here, these two teams have never faced going down on Saturday for the homecoming game at noon Eastern at Nippert Stadium. 15th consecutive sellout at Nippert Stadium for a game where the Bearcats are favored by five points now after opening, I believe, at four and a half. So betters favoring the Bearcats, more money coming in on UC, prompting a change in the line. Looking at some key players for Iowa State, it starts with the freshman quarterback, Rocco Becht. He's played very solid this year. Been very, I think, steady in his position as the freshman, taking over for the upheaval at Iowa State due to the gambling uh, gambling probe and all that stuff. 1,200 yards, 10 touchdowns, five interceptions. Beck's been very good so far this year. And then when you look at the other side of the football, it's the linebacker, Caleb Bacon. He is their best defensive player, I would say, by a pretty good margin. A really great run defender. Can get pressure on the quarterback as well. Can get taken advantage of a little bit in coverage, but he's helped by great safety play across the board. I mean, of their top eight players on PFF, four of them, the top graded players, are safeties. Now, they're not all playing safety. They're just kind of given that position designation. They're playing all over the defensive secondary but that's the strength of this defense, Dom. I'm thinking about TJ Tampa, also strong at the cornerback spot. 80.7 grade so far this year. 80.6 coverage grade. That is very, very strong. And guys like Malik Burden, Bo Freiler, 
to Sean James. I mean, they got dudes all across that secondary. Going to make it very difficult on the passing attack of UC. But on the flip side, they can be had a little bit on the ground game. EPA per rush, 42nd overall and EPA per rush allowed, 52nd overall and EPA per pass allowed. So can Cincinnati take advantage of a solid defense, not great defense, and can they find a way, Dom, to punch that football into the end zone more than a 40% clip once they get close to that goal line? This Iowa State team, top 30 in the country, top 35 in the country, I should say, in red zone touchdown rate allowed. They only give up a 50, they've only given up touchdowns on 50% of red zone possessions. Might end up coming down to that something's got to give between a rock and a hard place matchup in terms of the red zone defense for Iowa State and that red zone offense for UC, which is bottom 10 nationally and hovering around 42% success rate in terms of punching the football in the end zone once they get inside the red area. That's a major matchup for me on top of that secondary from Iowa State. Can they take advantage of it on offense? And then defensively, this Iowa State team is horrific, Dom. Horrific on early downs. Horrific on early downs. You have to continue making them one of the bottom three teams analytically in terms of early down expected points added. They're 130th nationally as an offense in early down production. If you can keep forcing them in the long third downs, you're going to get that offense off the field to consistent them out and make them play into the 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 kind of factor they've had to play in all season long. This is not a prolific offense by any means. They're averaging less than 400 total yards per game. Yeah, I think this is a game um, you can get after, especially having that bye week. Like Purdy talked about um, just as far as giving the chance to get that get their mind focused, get it clear. Coaches and players can really. Uh, figure out what what needs to be done. Um, like we touched on it, talked about getting the ball to Smith's hands, getting the ball in the uh, Henderson's hands, and getting the ball in the um, into what, what name? Mont, what's his name again? Shimon. Shimon Mater. Shimon Mater. I keep on messing it up. My bad. Don't <laughs> don't be mad at me, man. I'm bad. I'm bad with names, and I'm working on it. But. Um, <laughs> But the biggest thing is figuring out the things. I think they finally established who's the guys they got to get the ball to, and having that figured out now, you can now you can make those plays at the uh, at the red zone, designing them up, putting them together, and basing it off the run to also help execute uh, with the pass. So, um, and this is a game where that I feel like they can get it going. Um, the way the stats look. And where the numbers look, this is a game that can really get it going. And defensively, um, just getting back to it, just like you said, you forcing the long downs um, and early, early, um, early downs, first and second and long, they're getting off the field. So if they can get them off the field as much as possible, um, I think UC will come down and finally get in the red zone and finally put up some points down there and execute. Um, that's the only thing that's been going on, just executing. Um, so, and just we'll go back to touch back secondary. I know Coach Combs, my my head coach. I know he he he, he had him in the bye week, gave him that motivational speech, and, and he's like, "Hey, it's time to go." So I know Coach Combs getting together and having them ready for the uh, Iowa State's passing attack. But uh, end of the day, I think this bye week personally was something that they needed. And it's a, it's a refresher for all of them to really get back, get back to the swing of things. Will the Bearcats run defense smother a bad Iowa State rushing offense? It's a big reason why they've been so inefficient, Dom, on early downs is they're just not getting a lot of production. 116 rushing yards per game on offense. If they can hold Iowa State, I think the number is 100. If you can hold Iowa State under 100 yards rushing on offense, it's going to mean a lot of issues on early downs. It's going to force that freshman quarterback to be in pure passing situations against the defensive front and a front seven and a defensive general that loves to put teams in pure passing situations because you get Dom's MVP of the first half of the season, the leader on the team in sacks and tackles for loss, Dante Corleone coming at you right at the middle. You got Eric Phillips, the leader on the team in pressures, being able to come around on you on the on the outside. This Iowa State team enters this game ranked 88th in EPA per rush on offense up against a defense in Cincinnati, 18th in EPA per rush 
defensively. That has to be the biggest win for UC in my eyes on that side of the ball. If they want to keep them off target, they want to keep them off rhythm, and they want to put that freshman quarterback in some tough, tough spots in an environment that obviously he's never played in, Dom, and an environment that's going to be sold out. So you're going to have the Bearcats fans frothing at the mouth to get very loud during those late downs when they do come for this Iowa State offense. Very intrigued to see how the Bearcats tweak things in the red zone. Do they do a lot of things differently? Is it just execution? We had Emory Jones comment on the uh, the the miss passes, one to Peyton Singletary, which he put more on. Uh, I think he put that one more on himself. And then he said that Corey Kiner took some more responsibility for the drop pass, the big drop pass on the other short uh, flat route in the game against BYU. Just got to execute for three or four more plays. It's like a three or four play difference here, Dom. And the season would be, they could be four and one potentially as opposed to two and three. It's that razor thin in this conference. It's that razor thin in this season for a Bearcats team that came into the season with not very wide margins at all, considering the transition to a new conference, the transition to a new roster, and the transition to a new coaching staff. Dom, in the S&P Plus, ESPN, ESPN's all-encompassing analytics metric from Bill Connolly, 10, I believe, actually no, 12 of the 14 Big 12 teams are in the top 50 in S&P Plus. So it's just one of those things where outside of the Pac-12, I think you can make a strong argument that this is the, I think this is the deepest conference in America and the Pac-12 has the highest concentration of good teams at the top of its conference. But I mean, any way you slice it, the Big 12 is very competitive this year. It's a very tough conference to win in. Anybody can go down any given week. We saw that last week with Iowa State taking out TCU after getting blown the doors off or after getting their doors blown off in uh, in the in the week before. Anything can happen as UC enters this game on ESPN's Football Power Index, ranked sixth in the conference with a 6.1 rating, and Iowa State enters, I believe, 14, 13, 12, 11th in the conference with a 4.3 rating. And an Iowa State team, Dom, that has yet to win a road game this year. Lost at my alma mater, Ohio, 10 to 7 back in September, and they lost 50 to 20 at Oklahoma. Got to prove you can win on the road. I don't think they can do it. I'm rolling with the Bearcats 30 to 23 in this one. What's your prediction, Dom? I'm going with the Bearcats 35 to 20, 35 to 21. Well, two touchdown win on Dom's docket for Mr. Goodman across the way from me there. I'm Russ Heltman, and we hope you all have a fantastic rest of your Iowa State week. Enjoy the homecoming festivities, the homecoming parade, all that fun stuff as we pick things back up and are hopefully for Bearcats fans picking up the gems of a victory on Monday afternoon right here on Bearcat Blitz following the Iowa State contest for Russ Heltman or for, for Dom Goodman. I'm Russ Heltman, and this has been Bearcat Blitz on the Believe Network.